Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Over the last few weeks, I've appeared on a handful of podcasts. That's where people are interviewing me or just having a conversation about networking. And it's really kind of covered lots of ground. And it's got me thinking about, okay, what's really important in networking? In networking, it's a complicated thing. I mean, what it is, is easy, right? It's two or more people working towards their mutual benefit. And that can have personal context or can certainly have professional context and I would imagine a lot of people listening to this they're listening just from a professional standpoint um, but we do use networking in personal uh, a personal sense as well getting tickets to the big game or uh, investment advice um, finding a babysitter lots of different things um, so networking covers a lot of uh, covers a lot of ground but it Basically, it's just two or more people working towards their mutual benefit. That's easy. Putting it in play, the execution of it can be really complicated. And these interviews I've been on, I mean, nobody's trying to stump me, but there's certainly a lot of questions around, okay, how do you make it work? You know, what, what about this? What about that? And it got me thinking about, okay, what's, what's the most important aspect of a successful network and no one asks me that in general but it still got me thinking about it you know what's that what's that single most thing that really really matters in in the end Um, and again there's a lot to networking there's there's how we hold ourselves and I talk about this in foundational networking there's our presence you know how we carry ourselves around other people you know are we confident Um, you know do we You know, are we credible? You know, those sorts of things. I guess credibility goes to integrity. We'll talk about that. Um, But, you know, are are we confident? Are are, are we optimistic? Um, You know, is there is there an energy about us? Something, you know, uh, what I call contagious, contagiously energetic. Um, You know, what are expectations? Uh, You know, all sorts of things like that. And those things are certainly important. Um, but people also, you know, would argue, well, you know, generosity or what I termed in foundational networking altruism to be, to be the most important. Um, and when I talk about altruism or generosity, I'm not necessarily talking about money. Certainly that plays into it, but it's so much broader than that. You know, there's our compassion, there's our encouragement, you know, our willingness to volunteer our time, give compliments, uh, express appreciation, um, you know, just being generally thoughtful is, you know, is another aspect of, of generosity. And then the, the third element I talk about in foundational networking, I talk about integrity, um, you know, gaining people's trust. And, and I've always talked about reliability being really important with respect to that. I mean, if you're not reliable, um, you know, reliability, uh, reliability is like the number zero. Zero times any number is zero. Um, and a lack of reliability coupled with any other positive ad attribute is, is zero. I mean, if you're, if you're super intelligent and super competent at what you do, that's great. But if you're not reliable, then it really doesn't help me. Because um, I don't know if you're going to show up with that competence uh, when I need it most. Um, and so reliability kind of goes to, uh, integrity along with honesty and the willingness to say, I'm sorry. And the, and the willingness to forgive others. And, and those things are really important with respect to networking. Um, you know, the other thing that's important to networking and getting the things we want from our network is messaging, and I've worked on a lot that a lot within AmSpirit Business Connections, because generally in AmSpirit Business Connections, the people come together and they've known each other for a while. Um, they're 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 all small business people, and it's hard not to like another small business person 
who's just trying to make a go of it, and you know they're they're fighting the same fight you are, um, and they're coming to these meetings, and and they're you know if they're there reasonably consistent. They they garner a degree of of trust, but where they really trip each other up, or where they trip themselves up, I should say, is their messaging, and their their, their messaging is. It's, it's laden with too much jargon. Um, it might try to say too much. I mean, there's a whole, it's just, you know, not being clear. And I've talked a lot with an Spirit Business Connections about, about that topic of just trying to be clear with respect to our messaging. But in thinking about it, I think there's one thing that's probably more important than any of those things. Um, and... I got this revelation, um, again, on a couple of podcasts. I was on a podcast and just asking about, you know, you do things for people. You know, you shouldn't expect things, but, you know, when do you expect networking to work? And bottom line, it really came down to being patient. Um, And I think patience is probably that one attribute, probably the most important attribute to be successful in networking. Um, I can think back to my life, I think back over my life, um, and I have tripped myself up more times than not by not being patient. Um, Being impatient has not destroyed relationships, but impaired them, Um, just kind of puts a tension there that doesn't need to be there. And I think if you think about your own life, it might be something similar. I I mean, you see... You see personal relationships, people dating, and there's one partner who kind of wants to take it to the next level before the other person does. Um, and it it takes patience to hold it together. Um, someone might just walk away, not be patient enough. I know in my legal practice, I was always impatient about getting paid. Um, I've done the work. I've given you an invoice. Uh, and I had a few clients that were really good about, hey, thank you for your service. Here's your check, right? Um, it might be you might receive it in a couple of days, um, if not right then and there. And, th- and that was always great because that was in your mind. It was like, okay, the project is now complete. You know, I've done the work. I've invoiced for it, and I've col- I've invoiced for it, and I've, now I've collected it. I've done the work. Um, but there were times where, okay, I've done the work. The invoice is out, and they appreciate your your service, but you got to kind of wait. You got to wait for the money. You know, might be waiting for accounting to get it through their system, um, and or or you just might be waiting on them to get money. And those were always the hard. That was always the hard part, especially as I help people buy businesses because I just knew early on in a the business, there's just a lot of there's just a lot of expenses that. They don't anticipate, um, and as much as they want to pay you, you know, they just don't have the cash. And so you, you play the waiting game, and, and you kind of get impatient. It's like, well, I've got expenses on my end, too, so it's not it's not easy. Um, but, you know, similarly, when we work, you know, we're out there doing things in networking, we want things, you know, we want to pay back for our, for our efforts, Um and I think that's only reasonable that we want to pay back for our efforts. Uh, and it's easy to get impatient. It's easy to do things and look for something to come back in return. This is episode, I think, 556. I have to look. Um, and it doesn't matter, but I'm well into the 500s at this point. And my initial reasoning for podcasting was just a means to get you know, create an audience, certainly amongst the members, but amongst prospective members, um, and hopefully grow the organization in part through this. And and it's worked, um, not as well as I would like, but it's worked, and I won't get into particulars, um, but it's certainly opened doors that I didn't know were there before. Um, but I have to be honest, that didn't all start to happen until I was into, you know, 100 episodes. 
Um, and part of it's just you get better at things. Part of it, when you start interviewing, you start interviewing better and better people. My 100th episode was Bob Berg, and that led me to a lot of other great guests. You start to build some credibility. But I know, well, I was talking to uh, a, a gentleman who is big in the podcasting world. His name is Tom Schwab, uh, and he actually has a business getting authors and coaches onto people's podcasts. He's kind of a, a broker of guests, if you will, and was talking with him uh, early on, and I was probably not even to 100 episodes at this point. We had a nice conversation, and I told him, you know, okay, I'm at 70 or whatever number I threw out at him. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm just kind of getting started. And he congratulated me. He said, you know what? The average podcaster only goes to seven episodes. They stop. They're impatient. They did episode one, two, three, four, and their world didn't change, and they decided, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done podcasting. Um, I don't see the value in this, and so I'm going to kind of move on. In fact, if you listen to, you know, if you listen to my early podcasts, I talked a lot about our franchising program. Um, I don't really do that much at all anymore. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't put a pitch in. Um, kind of a call to action. I've just kind of grown to realize that, you know, this is the long game. Um, I don't really have, I really don't have an end in sight with respect to the podcast. I don't think it'll be okay. I've got a thousand episodes. I'm done. I'm really gaining a lot from podcasting. I'm, I'm learning, I'm meeting people, I'm expanding. I'm certainly having, you know, creating a, creating a presence out there with people, um, it's allowed me, having a podcast has allowed me to be guests on other people's podcasts, um, which has opened up a world of opportunity for me. And so I'll probably continue to do it. Some months I'm more active than others. Um, you know, here, this is, uh, uh, December, 2022, this is coming out. I just don't have as many episodes planned. And part of the reason is I wanted to avoid releasing episodes around the holidays if I could. Um, certainly when I interview people, it's just, I don't know, it's, I always felt funny about, hey, yeah, your episode's coming out, it's Christmas Eve. And they're probably thinking, well, who's listening? Um, but my point in all this is that I've just had to develop patience with respect to this. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm, it's the stonecutter's mentality. I'm just keep keep beating away at the rock you know, knowing that the next hit will might be the hit that breaks the rock open. I don't know. But if I quit now, um, then I realize that I've, you know, it's it won't ever break open. Um, so, I, you know, I, I'm not just doing it needlessly, but I'm just, I just need to be patient about it and realize that, you know, these things come in time. Uh, you know, I look at uh, and have spoke with Lewis Howes about this. I mean, he's got over a thousand episodes and he's, you know, his he's got some amazing guests and he'll tell you the same thing. It's just taken time for these things to happen. And I know early early on, Lewis, you know, he struggled with it and you have to wonder, OK, is it going to work? And so patience certainly plays a big role in things. And it's not just podcasting, it's lots of things. It's, you know, bloggers. Seth Godin, you know, he wrote a blog every day for years. And then all of a sudden he's starting to get traction. And other people look at that and like, oh, he blogged every day. That's the secret. And so then they blog every day and they get to day 20 and they're like, wow, yeah, every day. It's not really doing anything for me. But what they forget is blogged every day for years. You know, it's the four years that is the is the secret sauce. It's not the blogging every day. Certainly it's blogging and adding value. Um, but it's, you know, blogging every day and then things will come from that. Um, John Millen, somebody I know, he puts out a, he puts out a short newsletter, very insightful, calls it uh, Sunday cup of coffee. Um, and it's every week and he's very consistent about it. He might miss or he might do a, uh, there was one time where he was sick and he had to miss, and there are some times where he'll say, you know what, I'm going to re-release something that he's done in the past. Uh, but generally speaking, he's getting out, I would say, 45, 48 d different newsletters, you know, and just continually getting it out. And I'm sure there are times where he's like, is this worth my time? 
And he's like, you know what? I just need to keep after it. That stone cutter's mentality, the patience. Um, and it's, you know, going to networking events. You know, you just need to continue to show up. You need to continue to be there. You need to continue to put yourself out there amongst people. Certainly help people. Certainly, you know, be open to listening to other people and all the all the good networking practices. But you need to be patient about it. You need to be patient about it. Um, and it's it's that's it's easy to say. It's hard to implement. It's it, it's hard to say. Okay, I'm I'm going to be patient. Um, and there are a lot of people who who trip themselves up with these sorts of things just because they they haven't got what they're hoping for as quickly as they would like. And you know, it's uh, it you know, it just you just have to be patient. So in thinking through all the different things, all the different you know, all the different attributes. I think patience is most key because you can get everything else right. And if you're impatient and are changing and, you know, whatever, I, and I see it from time to time, you know, somebody, hey, I'm pivoting, I'm doing something new. And in my mind, it's like, well, what happened to the other thing you were doing? Um, and, well, you know, I just decided or they'll make they'll make something up. You know, my, my virtual assistants are taking that business on. And, I, I, you know, I don't really believe that. Um, I know a business, it's hard to make a business work, um, just with virtual assistance. I mean, I, trust me, I've, you know, I, I, I work very hard in Amspirit Business Connections and I, I can't see just surrendering it off to people. Um, there's always decisions that need to be made. I could be wrong. Um, but I, you know, I think it's, you know, it's a degree of patience in realizing that things aren't always going to go as fast as, as you'd like them to go. But, you know, eventually, if you just stick it, stick with things, eventually good things will, will come to you. So what's the most important attribute or characteristic or trait of somebody, of a, of a good networker? It's just the ability to be patient. Just the ability to be patient and just keep after it and keep after it and keep after it. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.